Our second speaker will be talking about self-advocacy of women in STEM and the importance of increasing the number of women working in STEM. Our third speaker will rebut and summarise our fifth case. Firstly, throughout his, uh, our history, women have been considered constantly characterised as lower in the social class of civilization. For most of written history, agriculture was the chief human occupation where women performed physically demanding chores and physical labour was not confined to men. However, through the mid-19th century, women were performing the majority of household domestic tasks according to Britannica.com. This meant that men were considered the sole wage earner of a in the family reinforcing the traditional perception of a male's position of, as head of the family. According to ABC.com, in today's society, women are still considered responsible for taking care of the children and performing domestic tasks such as cooking and cleaning. This has ultimately taken a, women away from the workforce as they expe are expected to do housework instead of work in STEM-related courses. Furthermore, whilst women have been accepted into the same occupations as men, Historically, women have been paid less despite their ability to perform the same, if not better and more advanced than men in the same occupation. Although current statistics show a closing gap between men and women wages, according to striking.com, there is still a significant difference, with full-time working women being paid 14% less than a, a men's pay for the job. This has had massive influences on women's confidence in participating in the workforce, as they will, they believe the consequences would involve unfair pay and treatment, despite the extremity of their work. My second point addresses the problem of the current workforce environment, as well as the negative impacts this is having on women's involvement in STEM. It is proven by EducationTrends.com that the present participation rate in STEM is highly concerning, with the statistics found by the Australian government that the women's participation is currently 61.1%, however for men it's 83.3%. This is primarily due to women being oppressed, which has therefore led to a decrease in women involvement in STEM according to the Australian government. The current workplace environment is highly uncomfortable for women as they are in the minority of their job according to globalassets.com. This is primarily due to male dominancy in the workforce, where women feel discouraged to work in a male dominant environment. A workplace's environment shapes the employee's interest and motivation to persist in their job. However, whilst working in a male dominant environment, women are discouraged from applying and continuing their service instead. By introducing bonus points for women, this will increase the current statistics on employment as they will have a higher chance in being accepted and encouraged to work in the, an occupation where it, is, where it is equal for female dominant according, or equal or female dominant according to businessinsider.com. These bonus points have the potential to encourage a large population of women to apply for the STEM related courses, which could, in, could, could continue to increase the amount of women working in STEM related occupations. Women's lack in, participation, in participating in the workforce is a major issue in today's society. However, this issue can be solved through introducing bonus points, as this will ultimately increase women's involvement and thus provide a better environment for women. In conclusion, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, we the affirmative team strongly believe that the UTS bonus points for gender is a good initiative because it will ultimately boost the application rate of women in STEM as they will be participated to to participate, encouraged to participate in a course that would provide a more comfortable environment. Current statistics show that men dominant in the modern STEM workforce as well, well that as being at the gender is provided with better treatment as they have greater wages in comparison of that of women. Ultimately, this has led to the oppression of women and the discouragement to participate in the STEM. However, we are, the, are to incorporate bonus points in order to decrease this gender gap. Then surely UTS points, if we do this, then surely UTS gender points are a good initiative. Thank you.
call upon the first negative speaker, Lauren Plant. Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that the UTS bonus points for gender is a good initiative. We agree with the definition provided by the affirmative team. However, we the negative team believe that this statement is false. The first negative, first affirmative speaker discussed the benefit women will have and how this will change their reputation in the workplace. However, employers will have an even better reason to discriminate against women, not because they are simply women, but because they were already not on the same level as men and wouldn't have gone through otherwise without these tokenistic bonus points. Gender bonus points are not a good initiative and are not changing stereotypes. Instead, it is setting lower standards for women in fields and devaluing the work of men who deserve to get in and wanted to get in. By believing there is a need to provide women with bonus points, to put them on the same level as men, is demonstrating that women are less capable than men. Countless studies have proven this discrimination, bullying, stereotyping and harassment women in STEM already experience. Will providing these bonus points for women to have the same job as men change these stereotypes? provide an initiative to other schools about its success and make women feel more equal and have a sense of belonging. Today as first speaker, I will be talking to you about why this initiative is not helping solve the issue of gender divide in STEM, which starts a lot earlier than senior school, and how gender bonus points devalue women's achievements because girls already outperform boys in education. Our second speaker, Hanson, will be discussing the impacts on other university students from gender bonus points and that gender bonus points is not a clear representation of that student's ability in STEM skills. And finally, our third speaker, Ishan, will rebut and sum up our team case. To my first point, how giving out bonus points for university is too late, as the gender divide in STEM starts a lot earlier. UTS believes that giving out these bonus points will help solve the gender divide. However, the gender divide in STEM is a much deeper and complex issue that starts a lot earlier. A study conducted by the American Association for the Advancement of Science assessed when these differential perceptions emerge. They found that gender stereotypes are endorsed by and influence the interests of children as young as six. Instead of waiting, the stereotypes regarding STEM careers needs to be addressed earlier through the use of female role models, who at a young age are crucial in helping, to pe in helping people define their career. A study by the Casper Key Lab revealed that a lack of feminine role models in STEM discouraged more than a third of young women from choosing careers in STEM fields. This study cited the need for more visibility of female role models, more inclusion of female opinions in the classroom, and more engaging resources for young girls. This is already a better solution than waiting until senior school. Award-winning computer scientist Professor Sue Black states, Role models have been critical in my success. I wouldn't have known that I could do what I've done throughout my career without role models shining a light on the path to career success. Those role models need to look and think like us, and we need them to be visible in the media and as well as in society at large so that they can inspire as many people as possible. More has to be done to promote female role models in STEM, but not through bonus points, through proven methods like raising awareness and education. Now to my second point. Why gender bonus points are a relevant and unnecessary initiative because girls already outperform boys in ATAR results. In New South Wales last year, two thirds of year 12 subjects were topped by girls, including several science and mathematics subjects that not so long ago were considered typically male subjects. Girls have also on average a higher ATAR than boys, according to national education correspondence. Girls do not need bonus points to level a playing field they are already winning on. The proposal by UTS devalues the intellectual ability of women. The UTS Director of Women in Engineering and IT told SBS News that it's about correcting the disadvantage of being a woman without lowering the bar. But that's exactly what is happening. UTS proposes to treat women as intellectual cripples, inherently less capable than men of clearing this particular intellectual hurdle. This convoluted initiative also ignores the fact that many evidently smart women are not choosing STEM careers like engineering because of the profession's misogynistic reputation. Once women get into the STEM workforce, they are hampered by systematic barriers such as gender-based discrimination, bullying, harassment, 
engendered expectations around caring responsibilities. How will bonus points shatter these stereotypes and inspire women to choose STEM? They will not. So, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, ATAR scores are not a factor for why women are not choosing to study STEM courses, so assigning gender bonus points is not a good initiative. Although UTS present this as a win for feminism and gender equality and inspiring women to have a STEM career, the creation of gender-based bonus points is in fact misconceived, unintelligent and profoundly sexist. The young women who take this option may not have progressed through the recommended subject pathways in high school to have the needed competence and skills for STEM. They will struggle, lose confidence and most likely add to the 25% of students that drop out of university if their choice in course comes down to a gift of 10 bonus points. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for tonight's debate is that UTS bonus points for gender is a good initiative. And we, the affirmative team, strongly believe that this statement is true. Before I begin, I'd like to point out some flaws in the opposition's argument. This first speaker of the negative team said that the gender divide in STEM needs to be amended through the use of female role models. However, to increase the number of female role models in STEM, it is necessary for more females to excel in STEM, which will occur through this initiative, as I will later explain. They also said that the UTS bonus points devalue women. However, as our first speaker discussed, women are already devalued, and this will just work to equal the playing field. Today, I will be talking to you about how this initiative improves the self-efficacy of women considering careers or courses in science, technology, engineering, and maths, and the importance of women in STEM, including how this initiative increases the number of women in STEM. Now, on to my first point. One of the leading causes of the low number of women in STEM is low self-efficacy, which could be directly battled by this initiative. By definition, self-efficacy is the belief an individual has in their own abilities, according to psychology.com. A study by the Sydney Morning Herald reported that due to the fact that STEM is currently a male-dominated field, males typically overestimate their ability, while females underestimate theirs despite equal achievement levels preceding subject selections. This means that when choosing subjects for years 11 and 12, females are less likely to choose STEM subjects than their male counterparts due to the belief that they are less able to do so. This is perpetuated by the stereotype that women are less suited to STEM careers, and therefore the social bias that affects women's progress and career choices, as said by Victor Silva, an education advocate with a focus in STEM. By giving the few women that apply to courses at UTS bonus points, this should increase the number of women as females would have a higher chances of being accepted, as has been shown through the UTS bonus points initiative for people of colour and other marginalised groups in the past. This would work to counteract the stereotype that women are not as good at STEM and therefore increase the self-efficacy of females in regard to STEM thus increasing the number of women interested in applying and working in the field. This leads to my second point, which is that it is vital for women to work in STEM careers. By increasing the selection rank of women applicable for STEM courses, more women will be accepted, leading to the short-term impact of more women with STEM degrees and the long-term impact of more women working in STEM. Any shortcomings of this initiative do not equate to the necessity of increasing women within the field. 
The importance of increasing women in STEM jobs cannot be overstated. Multiple fields have had large gaps in research due to the lack of the perspectives that women are able to offer to the field. An example of this is cardiovascular disease, which, up until 25 years ago, medical experts did not know manifests differently in males to females, due to the lack of research done on females as the males researching considered the male body as standard. This led to the serious misdiagnosis of heart disease within females, meaning the mortality rate for women with cardiovascular disease was significantly higher than males, according to csuglobal.edu, which was a serious issue that could have been avoided if more women were included in the research project. Or the research process, sorry. This is also shown in technology, as the lack of females in the technology field have also led to the, the invention of many pieces of technology that disproportionately assist men which with more women working in STEM could be averted. Such evidence of this can be found in the new technology involved in smart houses, such as voice controlled lights, which, according to the National Geographic, typically pander to men while are disinteresting to women. A recent poll conducted by The Guardian has shown that whilst 83% of men are interested in smart house products, only 23% of women are. They report that women show higher interest in technology that could be used for household jobs, and without more females in the field, the development of this technology is almost non-existent. With a greater number of women selected for technology courses through the use of the Bonus Point Initiative, more women would be involved in the development of technology and thus able to create technology that benefits women. Furthermore, a study by Catalyst found that on average, the companies that employ the most women on the board of directors outperform those with fewer women by 42% return on sales and 66% in return on invested capital. Overall, it is essential that the number of women in STEM increases, as the necessity for this far outweighs any negative impact. In conclusion, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, we, the affirmative team, strongly believe that UTS Bonus Points for Gender is a good initiative. It is, it is a necessary initiative to increase the self-efficacy of women in regard to technology to thus proliferate the applicants for STEM courses in the future. It is also essential in expanding the number of women in STEM, which compensates for any possible detriments of the initiative. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that the University of Technology Sydney giving bonus points based on gender is a good initiative. We, the negative team, believe that this statement is unquestionably false. Before I begin, I would like to start by pointing out some of the flaws in the opposition's arguments. The first speaker for the affirmative discussed the lack of women pursuing STEM pathways. We would like to establish that this is not because they don't meet the requirements, but because of personal choice. Girls are actually more than capable of qualifying on merit. Therefore, they should. According to studies by the ABC, girls are generally equally good, if not better, than boys in STEM-specific subjects. However, they display little willingness to continue this into their careers. The steps that should be taken should revolve around sparking interest, not allowing special admission. University careers should be selected based on merit. However, given that girls display equal ability, they shouldn't, and quite frankly, don't need a gender, a gender, gender advantage. 
The only thing that this would do is undermine their achievements and qualifications and potentially fuel more sexism in the industry based on merit of admission. The first affirmative speaker has also stated that we live in an unequal society where men are more advantaged than women. Bonus points impact more than just the women and the men interested in this course. Scaling and adjustment points already exist and benefit students. UTS proposing 10 bonus points seems a bit excessive and is not only devaluing the, fol the fellow men in that engineering course, but, bel but belittling the fellow students' efforts. Our first speaker, Lauren, has already stated how giving bonus points to female students does not address the imbalance in STEM early enough. She has also spoken to you about the fact that girls already outperform boys in ATAR rankings, but are still not choosing STEM subjects, because it's not a matter of intellect, but personal preference. Today, I will be talking to you about how giving bonus points to female engineering students is unfair to all of the current university students, as well as the fact that the ATAR itself is outdated and not the only thing that the universities should be looking for. To my first point, about how the initiative to give bonus points to female engineering students at the University of Technology Sydney is a poorly thought out plan that is destined to cause resentment. The university's initiative only leads to damaging the course's reputation, infuriating both pre-existing female engineering students and aspiring male applicants. By devaluing the degree with a free pass for these female students, the woman who applied normally under their own merit will find themselves graduating with a degree that is undermined as having less credibility because of the free handout. On the flip side, the males applying for the course will now have to compete with women who scored lower for the sake of equality. How is it fair that out of two students with the exact same ATAR, only one of these students is given the opportunity purely because they are a female? As a result of allowing underperforming students to enter a course which is notorious for its difficulty and complexity, it is setting up these young women to fail. According to the Chronicle of Higher Education, only a third of engineering students will graduate, with the other two thirds either changing majors or dropping out completely. As the university's new bonus point initiative will attract applicants that may not be able to succeed in a normal setting, it creates the very real possibility of these women being given a hand and then pulled right back down into a sea of debt. To my second point, I will be elaborating about how the ATAR is outdated and meaningless, and rather than adding bonus ATAR points, the University of Technology Sydney should lead an overhaul in admissions as per their stance as a 21st century learning environment. According to the ABC, only 26% of Australian university applicants are admitted on the basis of ATAR. More and more students are utilising early offers, aptitude tests, and certificate courses for entry into university. So why add bonus points to sweeten the deal on an outdated ranking system? Additionally, the ATAR serves its purpose as a ranking that is calculated in a manner that is clearly limited in its ability to rank students' capabilities. Instead of simplifying and regulating university entry as it is supposed to, it instead distorts high school education to revolve around it. A study by the Mitchell Institute depicts how students find themselves maximising their potential ATARs as best as possible, in ways such as taking easier variations of a course, not because it suited the student the best, but because they would be able to achieve a higher ATAR. This shows that it is a mediocre and unreliable ranking system, and one that should be factored in less, as most universities are starting to, or already doing. The University of Technology Sydney's decision to boost the scores of female engineering students does nothing more than highlight the already existing problems with the ATAR system, which is how it can be easily manufactured and represents nothing meaningful. This is especially relevant considering the top skills required for a successful career in STEM, skills such as innovation and collaboration. How does a ranking out of 100 allow universities to assess these skills and suitability for admission? It simply doesn't. Portfolios and evidence of character determine an individual's capabilities much further than a score ranking. The ATAR is simply a completely inadequate measure of selecting applicants. 
So, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we, the negative team, indisputably believe that the UTS bonus points for gender are a detrimental initiative. There is an inherent flaw with this so-called plan for equality. The ATAR is a subpar measure for such a plan, and forcefully handing out admissions to a single gender doesn't help the engineering field. It encourages a negative culture of resentment and inequality. That's incredibly ironic for a university that prides itself on a future oriented education. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that UTS bonus points for gender is a good initiative. We, the affirmative team, believe that this statement is true. Before I summarise my team's case, I would like to thematically address some flaws in the opposition's argument. The key themes evident in the opposition's case that I will address are that UTS bonus points are unfair to more capable men, offering bonus points for gender devalues women, and the bonus point initiative is ineffective. Firstly, the opposition tried to argue that UTS bonus points are unfair to men that are equally or more capable than these women. This is wrong, because these bonus points are simply offered by the university to counteract the disadvantage that women already face when trying to get into STEM courses and careers. The ABC article on which this topic is based clearly states that women in question must reach the minimum ATAR for these STEM courses to even be considered eligible for bonus points, and that the points are only applied during the final selection in order to boost a woman's low chance of being selected over her male counterpart. The sexism evident in, the, in final selections for stereotypically male-dominated university courses has been proven by the US National Institute of Health who explained that women often don't make the cut even if they have the required score, and that even if they do, they will be put at an objective disadvantage of lower pay, status, and opportunities at work. If women in STEM already have to face this, the least our universities can do is offer points that make them level to their male equivalents in order to at least reduce the impact of sexism during the final selections for a typically male course so that women can at least be a part of the STEM field in the first place. The negative team also said that offering bonus points for gender devalues women and undermines their merit. While being offered bonus points may be a blow to a woman's self-esteem, this is not the most important thing in the big picture. As I've explained, women must reach the minimum ATAR of a STEM course to even be considered for gender points, according to UTS. The bonus points thus have very little relevance to whether or not a woman is good enough, so to speak, to get into a course but rather their purpose is to help her make the final cut by levelling the playing field for men and women. Therefore, UTS bon bonus points for gender do not devalue women because these women must reach a minimum ATAR that proves they are fully capable of taking part in a STEM course and bonus points are only applied during final selections in order to give them a better chance to be selected. The negative team also tried to tell you that the bonus point system is ineffective and damaging to the course's reputation. However, it has been proven that the system has had a clear impact on improving gender diversity in STEM. According to Justine Romanix, National Manager for Pro Pro Professional Diversity and STEM at Engineers Australia, said the STEM gender gap becomes measurable in high school, and that trend continues into tertiary education, with women accounting for less than 25% of participants in engineering, computing, physics, and astronomy, to name a few. This undeniable problem directly relates to the STEM courses offered at UTS and proves that we need to put a system in place like the UTS bonus points for gender, which, as stated by businessinsider.com.au, 
is an effective system designed to increase the number of women in STEM, both in education and the workforce. I will now summarise my team's argument. Our first speaker discussed the relevance of gender stereotypes to the need for more women in the STEM field. She explained the significance of female oppression throughout history and the impact that it has on a modern woman's place in the workforce. She also spoke about the way that this history of gender discrimination has shaped a society where women are far less likely to be accepted into STEM-related jobs than men. Considering the clear disadvantage that women in a STEM workforce already have to face, bonus points are clearly a good initiative that, pro that provides more of an opportunity for these women to get into a university course and ultimately job in the unfairly male-dominated STEM field. Our second speaker introduced the importance of self-efficacy to women interested in pursuing a STEM career and discuss the likelihood that women will be affected by their own underestimation of their ability or by the social bias around women being stereotypically bad at STEM. She went on to outline the importance of women to the STEM field and explained that gender diversity is vital in developing new technology in order to ensure that it doesn't further perpetuate the gender stereotype that technology and STEM is for males. Finally, she reinstated the significant potential that bonus points have in encouraging more women to study STEM, because not only is gender diversity necessary to the field, but women should not be marginalised by the STEM workforce or made to feel as if they are in the minority. So, Madam Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, the bonus points being offered by UTS are a very good initiative because they allow women to step beyond stereotypes and historical oppression, improve female self-efficacy in STEM, and give opportunities to the female role models of the future that are vital to the STEM field. Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson, the first female president of the Scientific Research Society, said, and I quote, I would offer this advice to any young woman inspired by the possibility of discovery and innovation. Do not let others define who you are. Define yourself. Do not be limited by what others expect of you, but reach confidently to the stars. Dr. Jackson's words are inspiring and go hand in hand with what UTS is aiming to achieve through offering bonus points to women in STEM. A woman's place is not in the home, it's wherever she wants to go. So let's help women achieve their goals by giving them every opportunity to thrive in a STEM career. Thank you. Good evening, Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, the topic for this evening's debate is that UTS bonus points for gender is a good initiative. We, the negative team, believe that this statement is false. As third speaker for the negative, I'll be reiterating the points made by our first and second speakers. However, I would like to begin by pointing out the flaws in the arguments posed by the affirmative. Now, the first affirmative speaker has stated that we live in an unequal society where men are more advantaged than women. We believe that this does a disservice to strong, competent women and genuinely undermines social progress. Yes, we should implement systems both above and below the university level that aid women's education to get more up to the required standard, as well as attempt to inspire them into careers in STEM. However, UTS bonus points are quite frankly unnecessary. According to ASA, girls score higher in the VCE on average, and whilst there is a small skew towards males at the very top, girls are still extremely competitive. This makes it clear that girls don't actually require these bonus points. Rather, they choose not to enter the fields. It is far more beneficial to implement systems that develop interest for girls and aid them in the workplace. 
Now, the first speaker also said that historical oppression has created a negative working environment that is male dominant. This is incorrect, as women are actually meeting the requirements, but they're choosing not to go ahead. Now, all that this will achieve would be lowering the bar, one that women can already exceed, and it can actually contribute to the toxic workplace environment as it creates a reason for females to be held in a lower regard because they are perceived to need additional aid. Now, the second negative speaker also said that it will increase the number of women in STEM, which was historically for males as they were seen, as, as females were seen as inferior. Now, according to a study conducted by the American Association for the Advancement of Science, where they analyzed young children to assess when these different differential perceptions emerge, they found that these stereotypes are endorsed by and influence the interests of children as young as six. Specifically, six-year-old girls are less likely than boys to believe that members of their gender are really, really smart. Also at age six, girls began to avoid activities said to be for children who are, once again, really, really smart. These findings suggest that gender notions of brilliance are acquired at a young age, so university is far too late to counter these. Now they've also claimed that these bonus points will encourage more females to start a career involving STEM subjects. We would like to stress that these bonus points boost women up and give them a higher ranking at one university. However, this is the solution to the wrong issue. As we've, as we've said, females aren't actually ranking worse. They're regularly meeting the qualification categories but they're choosing not to enter STEM fields. In a Daily Telegraph article titled, If Girls Are Do Better at School, Why Aren't They Running the Country? They discuss the better year 12 scores that girls receive and the toxic working environment and lack of willingness that pushes them away from STEM and political pathways. Women don't need affirmative action when they're already working above standard. The problem doesn't lie in their abilities, but the social construct that suppresses their willingness. Now, the second speaker rebutted our first speaker's point surrounding devaluation by saying that they are already devalued. Now, we recognise this. However, as we have argued, this will contribute to an existing problem and actually further it, providing further reasons for women to be considered inferior within the field. Now, they also st now all three affirmative speakers said that it will increase the number of females in STEM and actually encourage them. Now, it needs to be remembered that universities are an industry and these bonus points might not be in the interest of women, as believed. A recent episode of Four Corners investigated how Australia's higher education system is being undermined by growing reliance on foreign fee-paying students. Academics and students have been speaking out to reveal a picture across the nation of compromised academic standards. Academics believe that admitting students who don't have the right qualifications or right prerequisites or correct language capabilities is setting them up for failure. This is not what a university should do. This is not what education is about. Because of these misconceptions about Australian university standards, the university business is booming. Higher educational institutions that only a few year ago, years ago were cash-strapped are now flush with billions of dollars brought in from fee-paying international students. This same attitude can be applied to women in STEM. Does UTS really want to set an example for closing the gender divide or just want more women in STEM courses that are not qualified for to drop out? In which case, in Australia, which is in Australia, one in five. Now, the third speaker said that the devaluation of one's degree only impacts self-esteem and this isn't significant in the bigger picture. Now, this is contradictory to their second speaker who said that women are equally capable and what's holding them back is self-belief and confidence. Now, our first speaker, Lauren, discussed the gender divide and social pressures that push women away from pursuing STEM. Not only is this the case, but as she discussed in a second point, and we have regularly established, women are achieving the required grade to enter these courses. Women can get into STEM on their own merit, but require the encouragement and passion to do so, not from tokenistic bonus points. Our second speaker, Hanson, spoke to you about how the initiative to give bonus points to female engineering students is frankly unnecessary. And he also discussed how the ATAR is obsolete. So, Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, we, the negative team, believe that UTS bonus points 
but genders are, but gender is an unnecessary initiative. The gender divide in STEM does exist, and the cultural and social barriers that lead women away at a young age must be addressed, but gender bonus points are not the solution. Thank you.